Hi and welcome to this vlog. My name is Jess Squires and I'm teaching and learning consultant for PE for Lancashire Professional Development Service. And my name is Glenn Musgrove and I'm the operations manager at the PE Passport. And we're just going to take you through how to get your school set up for the new academic year, plus the new functions and features of the Lancashire PE Passport platform. We're going to start by looking at the, um, the web platform. This is accessed through our website using the sign-in section in the top right-hand corner. Um, just a quick word of note, it will say the version in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, this is continually updated when we do um, things behind the scenes or add in new features. On the actual web platform, it shouldn't really be an issue. It should do that automatically. But it's always worth having a look or asking what version um, should you be should you be on. Um, we're currently on version 3.6.31. Um, once you've logged in, it shouldn't look too different from um, last year, but I will talk you through um, a couple of new features and a couple of new things you can do. Um, we've tried to make this more of a, an, an admin uh, area for P Leads SLT. So there's certain things that you can now do on here that you can't do on the um, on the app, um, but we're hopefully making making your life a little bit easier. That sounds like a good idea. So the web page is going to be more for admin and the apps more for that using in lessons day by day. So should we have a look at pupils first and yep. getting everybody up to date? So on the left hand menu, um, if I click first the pupils, um, you'll probably um, notice a, a mistake or an issue. You can see the children are in um, year one, what the class actually says, reception A, reception B. Now, over the summer, all the pupils are moved up a year group. Um, the year sixes are then sort of removed and archived along with everyone else's data. Um, but the system doesn't know where the children need to go. Um, if some schools have specific names like Oak or Ash or anything like that. Oh, yeah, uh, or if they're a mixed age class. Or a mixed age class. It doesn't know where the children go, so they do remain um, in their... Um, in the, the classes from last year. So if you just have a look in this example, year 5A, um, they, are, they have moved up to year six, but they are shown as year 5A. A couple of um, different ways you can do this. So I'm gonna show you a very quick way if you're a simple sort of one form entry or two form entry, you just move up um, the children. Um, easiest way is if I click in the, the settings um, and then the classes, You'll see there the classes, class names. So I'm going to go down to this uh, year five and amend it to year six, eight. And you can see that's gone to the bottom of the list now. I'll do the same with class B. And then if I return to the pupils and go to that six, A, you now see that corresponds and it will sync across your account to um, all, all of the um, web users and the iPad as well. Perfect. That's great. That's really easy to do, isn't it? Yeah. What if you had, um, say, some year fours and some were going to a year five class and some were staying in year with a year four if you were a mixed age? So, again, um, it is something you can do yourself. Um, I'll show you shortly how uh, you can send us the information. So we're more than happy to do that um, and you can send us that information. But if you wanted to do it yourself, so I'll just pull the example here. Um, so these are year four A. Um, and obviously they are the, the year fives. Um, little button at the top here, um, you can see once I've pressed that, it selects all the uh, pupils in this class. So it selects all the pupils and I move pupils and I de uh, delete pupils as appeared. Um, so if I just deselect it, it goes. And if I press it more than one, you see that it appears. So this would allow you to select the children that you want. And then I would click move pupils. And then, because I've not got the class, I could just enter the new class. So the army year five. So I'm going to say uh, year five, six, eight. And I'll move them pupils. Um, all you would need to do then is I'm going to click on a different area and click back to refresh. And you now see that I've moved it. So oh, you can manage easy. them um, like that fairly easy. This is great. So schools can sort their own data out if they would like to. They can move yep. all the children wherever they need to. If they don't want to do it themselves, um, what can they do? Yep. So again, I'll just start from the beginning. It is pupils. Um, you've got the import button here. So this allows you to select a file from your um, computer. So I'll press the import. 
All right, uh, from their office system, from, yeah, from the office system. Or whatever. So I'll mm -hmm. press, um, you can select the file. There is a template that you can use. So if I just press that, this just effectively shows the headings. So pupil name, year group, school, just in case um, we need to identify it. Register, so the class name and the gender. They're mandatory, so they're the specific fields that we need. Um, then ethnicity, English as a second language, SEN and pupil premium, they're obviously optional. Um, obviously, if you do include them, it will report on them. Mm -hmm. So that is, um, like I say, that's the field names we need. Um, you select the file from your computer. Um, you can just add it, enter a contact e email. So um, if it's your off office staff, they can um, they can get the reply, or you can uh, um, put in your own, and you'll get notification once it's complete. Any additional notes, or you might want to say we are a mixed class. Oh, that's uh, a good idea. Yeah. Um, just to get just to alert us, and then we can manage them changes. Um, and then it is a simple upload. Um, it comes into us. It normally takes around about 48 hours for us to update your um, account. You will get notifications, so we do um, send that return email once you've once it's been done. Perfect. Uh, so over summer, children have automatically been moved up a year group, and then you can come into here, and you can either do it yourself, move them to the right classes, or you can do the import. Yeah, and like I say, if you've got if you do do it yourself, and then you've got some new starters. Yeah. Um, it is just in this top right corner. You can add new if you've got people that are left. You can either, if it's more than one people, um, pupil, you can select them and delete. If it's just the one, you can literally go into that pupil and you can delete them there and publish okay. them changes. So you have that facility there. Perfect. Great. That's brilliant. So we've had a little look at how to get your pupils all up to date. Next thing we're going to ha have a look at is extracurricular and competitions and events because you will have received your newsletter and know that we've now opened up extracurricular and the competition and events to everybody that has the Lancashire P Passport platform. So how do we go about setting up our extracurricular? So obviously on the menu, it, it is available on the app as well, but again, we're trying to make this more of a, an admin based area. Um, I'll click it there. You can see this is already populated. So any schools that have used this feature function before, um, whatever you had last year will be carried over now that is only the names so it's not it's not any pupils or anything like that so if you do the same clubs um yeah this too. Through, you can you can do it if you don't do the same clubs um you can get rid of them so i'm just going to select key stage two dance um, and then all i would need to do is delete that activity and like i say it's not deleting any data it's not deleting anything from last year it's just deleting that that tile um so you can either use them, or if you were to create um, once you're adding new ones, it is a very simple function. Add new top right hand corner. Um, you can enter any of the details. So I'm just so the activity title is in autumn one. It's on a Monday. It's after school, um, and then if I just scroll further down. Um, it's you can change the minutes, so it's a 50 minute club, it's going to be um, for seven weeks. It's PE based, so you can actually use it for all the clubs if you wanted to. So you've got the, the options there. Um, you can put any, any further details. Sometimes I use this for about walking home or any, yeah, any where they're meeting to get changed, things, all that kind things of like stuff. that. And then obviously, you can add in the pupils. So, again, very simple system. I press plus. You can search by the class. So I'm looking at the year sixes and I'm just going to select the pupils that are there. And then they're in my club and I can publish the changes. And you'll now see it's appeared here. If I click it again, view will take me back into the activity, but attendance um, will actually bring up the weeks and then I can mark the attendance of the children each week um, this syncs to and from uh, the app so it'll appear on the app and we will show you that shortly and you can go to and from um, with the the uh, the attendance and that's great because that then also goes into the reporting section so you can look at participation uh, and all that which is brilliant yeah and if you use the the 
functions like pupil premium SND, it'll, it'll be able to show you how many children pupil premium yeah. are taking part in it. And really useful if you're doing your school games, Mark, um, for this academic year, so you can see how many children will have attended clubs. Um, bearing in mind this year we're having that focus on girls, so it'll be helpful when you're planning your clubs to ensure we've got enough coverage for the girls. Yeah, and events is, is um, very similar. Um, you create a calendar, um, obviously if I click in, it'll show me the pupils, the event title, again, the event level. So is it an in-school event? Is it against other schools? Is it a competition? You can set your standard. Um, you can even put the event address and things like that um, and publish the details. Again, it will populate that calendar. If you look at the dashboard, it'll have your upcoming events. Um, and it, again, it tracks that data. So it'll tell you how many boys, girls are taking part in competitions, how many year five, six, and things like that. So, Perfect. Yeah. And on the iPad, you'll be able to add photographs, won't you, of them yeah. as a team, et cetera. So that's brilliant as well. Brilliant. So we've had a look at how to put our children in. We've had a look at the extracurricular and the events. Now let's have a look at the planning. The planning. Again, um, Fully syncs across from from web to app. Um, but if you are making changes to the planning, um, this is probably the easiest place to do it. Um, plus buttons means obviously there's a section available for you to add the unit. Change planning would allow you to um, take away um, and confirm that. So obviously that's been removed. And then the plus button is where you can select the planning. You can see. In the top right here, this is more of an, uh, an internal thing for us, but it displays column one, row one. So we'll be able to isolate um, where your planning is as well. So if, if you have any issues in that respect, you can let us know and we can we can update you in there. But if I select um, the unit selection, you've got the core units. These are obviously everything that's available in that year group. Then the next tab is the school units. So if you do um, custom units, we can briefly show you that. And these will become available here. Uh, dance to school, are all the new dance units that we've added. So that's great. Part of the uh, functions and features this year is the new dance to school scheme of work. So more dance lesson plans. And then we have the Pippa and Eddie, which is available in um, the early years. So this is the, our sort of character based storytelling unit of work so it's Pippa uh, and Eddie, P and E and um, it's just a different structure to the lessons but they're available for everyone to use as well right. um, and you do um, just drop them in um, into the planning and it obviously appear there for you. Perfect and another new feature that P Passport have added for us this year is the admin area so Glenn could you talk us a little bit through that? Yeah so um, feedback over the past couple of years is obviously um, P leads obviously um set the planning and set the pupils and the extracurricular but then because everyone's got the same access there is um temptation to change or you know accidents do happen get changed so we've set it up a new um admin user um it is in settings and then it's under teachers now when you initially go in here it might ask you to use the login that you've got as the admin um so what i would suggest because you've all got all the teachers use the same login. I would suggest that you uh, email us. Um, the email address for you is lanx at primarypassport.co.uk. Um, if you email us with your school name, your postcode, and obviously it'll be your email address that becomes the admin person. Um, and then we'll set that up for you. And we'll let you know when it's done. And then when you come in this area, you'll see here, we've got... Um, me here i am the admin user and i'm active and then mrs musgrove um she's just an active user so your current login will be the active user um so you can effectively just carry on like that and everyone around the schools uses the current login and you're the admin um or you can add new logins so teacher name teacher email and the password actually it doesn't have to be a teacher email it's just um, obviously easier for the teacher to remember password they're not going to be admin but they're going to be active and you can set that up for all teachers 
Or you can carry on using the, the one login that, that's totally up to yourself. That's that's useful, isn't it? And especially yeah. if teachers are logging in and out of iPads and they need to remember the passwords, um, sometimes it's a bit tricky to remember the ones that we might have set up for you. And also really useful having that admin. I know as a P subject leader myself, when I've set that curriculum map, I want it to stay. I don't want people to move units around. Um, so really important that, that we can lock that. Yeah, and there will be various different features for the admin user, uh, locking the long-term plan, making custom amendments to uh, to the school. So that um, you'll see that coming um, through further guidance and updates. Brilliant. Whilst we're on the web, could we just show people the library so they yeah. know where to find documents and evidence and videos? So the library on the left-hand menu um, comes up with the um, paper documents first. So a um, couple of different areas. Obviously, we've populated it with documents from um, AFP, from Swim England, from our P passport themselves. The quickest way for Lancashire schools is getting the organisation documents. So this is all the things I want you to have a look at? Uh, um, yes, support. various documents there, a couple of pages worth. Um, I know someone was asking me the other day. Uh, progression documents. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's all sitting there. That's in there. Um, and you can download them. Um, any sort of... Re re um, supporting resources that you might need. You'll see um, the titles for you, so um, it's worth having a look in there um, if you need anything. Brilliant. Uh, you then have the videos, again, a couple of different areas, just some uh, basic skill videos, using a drop-down men uh, menu, some yoga videos, and then you have the Lan Lancashire-specific ones, and if it's referencing a lesson, it'll be there for you as well. Brilliant. And what about the evidence archive? Evidence archive, my favourite area as the P lead, um, rather than going in every lesson. Um, this is where all the evidence that has been taken across school will sync. So as you can see, there's two pieces here because it's the start of the academic year um, and none's been taken. Um, but this is where it'll all start populating. You can filter. So using the filter, I would be able to have a look year six and then have a look at year one so it would allow me to see actually um how we're consistently using it across the school um, and what if i were to look at last year's academic year's evidence where would i find that yep so it's the same so it's in the same section and it is obviously i'm going there and i'm going to apply that filter and you can see um all the different evidence we've got there okay. again just another quick visual this is just a demo account, but yeah. there was 32 results of evidence last year. So it just allows you every time to, to know uh, where you are and who's taking evidence and not. Brilliant. So over summer, automatically the app and the website has moved everybody up a year group. Yep. And it's cleared off everybody's evidence and archived it onto yeah. the website. As well as the data as well. We didn't really show that, but yeah. that is available in the reporting. So it'll show you um, this year's, but then you can filter and it goes back to last year's and you'll have that access to that data on there. Brilliant. That's great. So we've had a look at what we can do on the web version. So now let's have a look at the iPad itself because it looks, and I'm sure some of you have noticed, it looks different. It's all been upgraded. It looks fantastic. So let's have a little look at the iPad. There we go. Perfect. So, um, Yeah, we've made some different amendments on the actual um various things on the um the the app my very again I just use it my favorite area is my account because if i go there and scroll to the bottom it says the version number um so the version number is 8.1.0 um at the time of recording this i'm actually one ahead because I'm, I'm looking at the <laughs> i'm looking at the the next thing that we will be adding um this year's version has to be eight. Um, the PE passport is in its eighth year, um, so it has to be eight. So for all data to sync and record, it has to say eight. So if I'm not eight, if I'm still on 7.6, for example, what do I need to do? So it would just be a case of visiting the um, the App Store. Um, so I can show you here. It's on the, um, the App Store when it comes up. Primary PE passport. And if you actually click in the app, it'll show you. So ver uh, version history, um, one day ago, there was 8.0.2. Um, so you need to go here, but if you can't do that, because some schools, yeah, your IT by support. IT, it will be a case of letting them know. It sh depending on how they work, it should happen automatically. But um, if you're not in the correct update, it's worth giving them, giving yeah. them that, um, that nudge for you to obviously 
get onto that. Perfect. Get onto so that it looks story. different, doesn't it? We're a lot more colourful. We've gone from, to red from turquoise. Gone to red. It was just, um, again, just in our updates, is it's the PE Passport, is the platform, Lancashire um, schema work um, is obviously is, is on there. Um, that's great. And that's how, that's how that works. So if we go into a lesson plan, because there's some new features within there now, isn't there? Yeah, so a couple of new features in the, the lesson plans. Um, one is you'll Ooh. see... You'll see straight away that actually you can see um, in the right hand side is the evidence. So that will show you the evidence for the actual unit. Um, so you don't have to keep pressing in each lesson. Um, so that's there. But if I go into the actual um, lesson, um, the evidence button is the same as previously. Um, photo, video, but now you can go to your, um, your library. So you can select, um, you can select a, picture from your camera roll perfect so if, so if you've some... taken a photograph of when you're not using the app, yeah yeah you can drag that in that's good and i think it's twofold because actually if you go back into the the picture using the the cog at the top you can delete the evidence yeah but actually if you're using it from the camera roll you can take as many pictures as you want or videos as you want and then you could select the most appropriate ones yeah yeah that's so, really good yeah so i think that's a, a good addition there Excellent. um yeah, and then we've got obviously the self assessment button is now available in every um, every lesson just for ease, so you can get your children to come out. Um, I always say the same: um, they choose the name, they choose their avatar. Yeah. Four very basic questions about PE, but the opportunity is at the end. There's an opportunity yeah. to video them and ask them your own your own questions, and it will record to to the children. Lovely. Um, what about the outcomes that we'd like them to have a look at after each lesson that linked to the lesson objective? Yep, so the outcomes, again, I'm just on a different version, so it might look a little bit different on yours, but if I select the pupil, um, we've just, again, visually, we've we've just changed it there. Um, so you can just change it to, um, we use bronze, silver, gold in the colours, but obviously it is um the actual statements there for you lovely that's great and that will save there and then we can always get to that end of term assessment sheet can't we now yeah and again that's available in every every unit uh every lesson so it just it displays there for you lovely and then feedback um feedback yeah uh teach feedback so notes personal to the teacher so lovely and that's just moved hasn't it because it was up at the top yeah it's up at the top yeah so notes personal for the teacher assessment for learning i always say this because it sometimes get missed in the screwdriver and the spanner there um obviously it tells you the equipment resources yeah. but it also gives you the previous assessment for learning notes so if i was to type this is lesson one so it wouldn't be applicable but if i type it in lesson two it then it then carries over for there lovely so that is the updates on the, the lessons. Perfect. Um, probably worth saying, obviously, we've updated our long-term plan on the web. In the top right-hand corner here, um, you've got the edit button. So you'll see that it allows me to take the units away. But next to it is the is the sync button. So again, if you've made changes on the web, you either log out or log back in on the app. But if not, you should just be able to, to sync. So that's there. And the exact same because it's the same button, pupils and classes. Um, you can see this is the account I used before and I've always been I've already been logged in. So you can see it still says year 5A, year 5B. Um, and if I press it, you can now see on the left-hand side, it's updated to the changes I made. That's great. So that's always talking to the web version, isn't it? Just having to press that little yeah. refresh and like button. I say, if you log out and log back in, that does it. But if you're not, it, it's worth just, you can press it there as well. Excellent. Um, and yeah, just like we've shown before, extracurricular, that's there. So you can see uh, the football, um, the football that I entered, events and com uh, the events and competitions. You can see the events I Brilliant. entered there. Perfect. And we could give them a sneak peek at the swimming. Should we give them a sneak peek? <laughs> Let's give them a little quick sneak peek at the swimming. So, so this is coming very soon. So specific swimming portal um this is just an overview so it's obviously um, some information there we've partnered with swim england um with a lot of this you get access to videos so um the, the tags so you can search them 
um, teacher activity, you've got traveling, front crawl and things like that. So Excellent. access to all the videos, specific lesson plans. Um, so they are available in this section. Um, you can see them, them there. Um, additional documents. So again, just supporting documents that we think you might need for swimming. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the, the pupil achievement. So oh, this uh, is the exciting bit. The awards, the awards section. Um, if I select a pupil, you can see um, you've got the different the seven different stages. I'm going to press stage one. And this is the specific outcomes that you're looking at the children achieving. Um, one of our biggest feedbacks was you mark where they've actually achieved in the national curriculum. So yes, they can swim the 25 meters, but if that child can't swim 25 meters, where actually are they on the sort of um, the spectrum? Are they not even started or are they on different stages? So this allows you, you can select them like that, or you can select them all. So that's stage one complete, stage two, three, four, five, six and seven and then that's they've completed the learn to swim framework awards and if they've completed the learn to swim framework awards and completed up to stage seven that then means they've met national curriculum requirements which is what we need to be doing in our school swimming sessions so we need to get that stage seven's finished as well. So this is great. So we can really track the progress of the children and share this with the swim teachers. Yeah, and I think visually it's good to be able to to show the children that they've they've completed that. Excellent. Perfect. And that will be on our website, on our app really soon, won't it? It will be, yes. Excellent. Thank you so much. Well, we hope you found that useful, this uh, vlog. Uh, any other questions that you have, Glenn and the team at PE Passport are always there. Please use our email address and get in touch. We are there to support you all the time. We hope you're enjoying using the app and have a lovely academic year. Thank Check you. It out. Bye. Bye. Thank you.